All right, what is going on, my lovely ladies and gentlemen of the world? I got some salt to let flow. If I don't do this, if I don't let this salt just get out of me, release it from my system, I'm going to die of dehydration within the next 15 minutes. It's bound to happen. It's all related to Dark Souls. So I'm going to talk about that first. But then I'm going to get into anime stuff. Revelator, Central Fiction. The lack of release date for, or the lack of a console version for Unist. Just continually daily making me sadder and sadder and eventually I am just going to be curled up in the fetal position in the corner of my room. Nobody's going to be able to rouse me from my depressed stupor. It's not going to happen. Please. What y'all called? French bread? Please do me a solid. Give me a console version of that game. My girl Nanase got buffed. I need my buff girl. Come on, son. Shit. Anyway. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the anime character. Released in the anime-based game, but it's not really considered an anime fighting game. Street Fighter. Abuki. Damn. But first, we're going to talk about Dark Souls. Now, this is not going to be very long because i understand that uh that's the that's the warning i gotta give to everybody i go on a date with <laughs> yeah nailed that one all right okay so dark souls i'm not gonna discuss this for overly long because i know you know the reception of the videos was not what i wanted them to be um and so obviously you know when you're looking at a video there's two things you can do view count which is somewhat important but what is really important is how many likes a video gets in relation to its view count that's how you know like okay this video didn't really catch on it would have been nice if it got more views but the amount of likes that it got in comparison to the amount of views is solid enough that I know like if this had caught on if this had received more attention it would have then kind of just snowballed from there and continued to get more attention because clearly people liked it in contrast to that if something doesn't get very many likes, then you know, like, oh, okay, well, then this didn't really deserve more views, so that's perfectly fine. The Dark Souls videos were apparently the latter, so I don't want to discuss it for too long. But, like I said, I gotta let, got let this salt out, man. I have finally gotten involved in the PvP, the online aspect in general, both co-op and PvP, but co-op doesn't really give me any... Like, I don't care if a host dies stupidly during the middle of a boss fight. If anything, I find it amusing uh, just to watch the ways people can kind of figure out to die in like the worst unimaginable to me ways to a boss. Like how did you just stand there and let that happen to you? It's really, I, I enjoy that part so I don't get salty when a host dies and that person just like, you dumb motherfucker. You cost me five minutes of my life. I hope you burn in hell for sucking at the game. Get good, scrub. That's not me. That will never be me. I derive enjoyment out of everything. If I do not derive any enjoyment from something, I stop doing it. <laughs> Pure and simple. Like, if something's going to get me to a point where I got to hop onto, like, a message board or something and just scream and rant about something somebody else is doing, I recognize I got to stop paying attention to that shit. This is not healthy. But uh, either way... I have been getting involved in PvP a lot. Now, I have been in every situation imaginable. I have been invaded 1v3. I have invaded people. Or I mean, yeah, I've invaded people, and it's been 1v3. I've been on the 3v1 side. I've had a 1v4 once. Boy, that didn't last very long. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I had a 1v5 once. It was in, uh, it was after Pontiff where the Aldrich Faithful summon in. I was just doing a regular invasion. And so I invaded in a world where there were four people, the host plus three phantoms, and then an Aldrich Faithful spammed in, spammed in, spawned in. And for some reason, this asshole comes after, when I'm trying to deal with this 1v4 already, this motherfucking Aldrich Faithful comes straight for me. It wasn't one of those like, ah shit, sorry the targeting system targeted you, or sorry you were kind of in the middle of my swing when I was going after this other dude. This dude specifically focused me, and I know that because I lasted for about 30 seconds. Another thing that I gotta warn ladies of before we go on a date. I lasted approximately 30 goddamn seconds trying to, you know, kind of find my spot to murder somebody i didn't find it but so this dude was targeting me the entire time and so finally this coalition of assholes finally brought me down and the moment i died the host and the three phantoms immediately murdered the aldrich faithful just one shot and i was like yeah fuck you 
You dumb son of a bitch. We could have potentially bullshitted out the host, gotten you your item, gotten me my item. Instead, you come and gank me? You dumb son of a bitch. But that's why I love, like, so a lot of people will just be like, this is the worst game in the world. Invaders are such a disadvantage, blah, blah, blah. No, hell no. That gave me a story. And that's why I like PvP. Because no matter which way it goes, it gives you an interesting story. And so that, like, when you get into the whole balance thing, if you get into, you know, what's bullshit, what isn't, everything goes south. This game is not designed for PvP. This game is not balanced for PvP. Thus, it's going to be bullshit. And so that's why I wanted to let the salt overflow for a moment because I can, 95% of my deaths, I can point and say it's because of one of two scenarios. I got parried and they got a Hornet Ring repulsed that one shot me which is fucking bullshit and then the second is either somebody using goddards or cell sword twin blades plus the dark moon blade buff and just fishing over and over for that single l1 in order to go into the spin to win combo and that one shots me from 1500 goddamn health plus lloyd's shield ring that shit one shots me are you serious oh my god fucking dark moon blade Whew. So I just had to let that out. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna elaborate on any of them because the thing is, like, a lot of people are complaining about. I do think that if anything deserves a nerf in the game, it would be the Hornet Ring and it would be Dark Moon Blade, just because one shots, one shotting shit isn't fun for anybody. Like, it's fun from a sadistic point of view if you're the one using it of just understanding, like, that was complete and utter bullshit. I just ruined that dude's day. Yay that's basically it like it's not something that you're just like man i'm so good i was such the uh, i was you know that was a fantastic display of my skill there's none of that if you do think that you are delusional as shit <laughs> and it's the same thing with a hornet ring now part of this is my fault because i continually insist on using subpar weapons things like scythes things like um uh, what's another weapon that I've been using a lot? I, I can't even fucking think about it right now. I'm too sad. Basically, I've try been trying to focus on scythes. And so the problem is that, you know, you want to, be, especially when, during an invasion or during an invasion on either side, you want to kill whoever your target is as fast as possible. That's not, that's not the scythe. <laughs> the scythe is not going to do that. Even if you are proccing bleed on somebody... I have never once managed to kill somebody with a combo using the scythe with bleed proccing. It's just not good. From full health, it's just not good enough for that, even with bleed. And it doesn't stack bleed very fast to begin with. So part of it is my fault is that I, because of my weapon choice, people get second chances, third chances, fourth chances, just depending on how many times I fail to roll punish or, you know, I let them escape and sip some Estus, whatever they keep getting more and more chances to get that lucky parry and so i would say like the success rate on me with people that are trying to parry me is probably somewhere around one in 20 but that's completely irrelevant if it's that low of a probability when i get one shot it just takes that one and i get one shot and so it's kind of irrelevant if somebody keeps spamming and i keep punishing them the optimal way to do it would just be to use hornet ring myself and to backstab them every single time but i refuse to use the hornet ring just from a point of pride because i don't think it's interesting i don't think it's fun i don't think there's anything good about the existence of the hornet ring i don't know i meant to not talk about this and i'm going to stop talking about it but basically point being i don't understand why the hornet ring exists and if they believe that it should exist at the very least you should have one that determines like, I, you know what, no. You, it just needs to have the fucking damage malice shit that every other ring that boosts your offense in some sort of way has, except also the Leo ring. Why does the Leo ring exist, which boosts thrust damage counter damage, it buffs it by quite a bit, why does that exist? But nothing exists for slash damage, and nothing exists for whatever blunt damage is. Let's just call it smash. Nothing exists for slash and smash damage, but something does for thrust, Why? It's not like the thrust damage weapons need the boost. Thrusting swords are fucking amazing. They don't need that extra, you know, like, 200 damage on top of the counter hit. Like, goddamn. But anyway, I digress. We're not here to talk about that. Street Fighter and Ibuki. Why? 
are people shit? <laughs> Why do people suck? It makes me so every single time in every single fucking fighting game, they see somebody and they immediately make a snap judgment this character is overpowered or this character sucks and is useless and is never going to be seen ever again after their release because they're just that bad. Abuki has been receiving the latter attention. You, you've seen nothing. You've seen literally nothing that allows you to make that sort of judgment. Thus, why are you stupid enough to believe you are an expert on the subject? There's a reason why motherfuckers gotta go through school and get degrees and get certified in order to make statements as fact in any respected community in the world. So why do you think you can watch a one minute video and make a judgment about something? You fucking dumbass. Oh my god, it makes me so goddamn mad. Like, see, I can look at something, for instance, in Central Fiction. I can look at Tager and be like, man, this character is, yeah, not bad, but eh. I can make a solid judgment about that character based on footage seen regarding that character because I have so much previous experience with said character. I have played this dude for like 17 iterations of this stupid fighting game that I keep buying because I'm a stupid dumbass and Arc System Works just keeps pulling money out my wallet and I can't stop him. Shit! But that is neither here nor there. I have played a lot of Tager. I am capable of understanding this is the character's tools, this is what he's good at, this is what he sucks at. What do his present, what do the present versions of his tools capitalize on do they cover some of his weaknesses do they only benefit his strengths thus his weaknesses are left wide open that kind of thing i can analyze that and understand all right this character's back to just being purely average he's not bad he's gonna keep blowing up the people he always blew up he's gonna keep getting blown up by the people he's always been blown up by we're floating along same shit as always he's okay pure and simple we move on i can make that judgment because of how much experience i have with this character i cannot look at Izanami's trailer and be like, wow, this character has projectile Oki, this character has a super floaty jump that gives her some kind of, looks like it should give her some ridiculous mix-ups, overpowered, overpowered, nerf that character before release, this bullshit, she gonna win Evo, she gonna win SBO, she gonna win everything under the sun, nerf her, Arc System Works, I can't say that, I can look at her and be like, yeah, that character's probably gonna be pretty damn strong, but you know what? I'm going to wait until I see some real evidence of it. But no, motherfuckers don't care about no evidence. Motherfuckers just think they smart, and motherfuckers not smart. Ah! That's all I had to say about Street Fighter. Everybody's made up their mind about how they feel about Street Fighter by now. Either you hate Capcom, I'm sorry, Crapcom, or you're just like, fuck it, I'm just going to keep playing the game. I don't give a shit about what you think. Like, whatever. That's where I'm on. Like, <laughs> if you want to hate the game, hate the game. You do you. I think it's weird. I think it's awkward. But we move on with our lives. So let's move on. Ravelator. Comes out in a week. I'm not going to be here. This is probably for the best. I'm going to try to get it from Gamefly. But I am going to visit some family. So I am going to be MIA uh, for a little bit. So I'm not going to have, unless the people down there happen to buy Guilty Gear. But I don't think, they are gamer. I do have, I'm going to visit some aunts and uncles and cousins. Uh, they are, the cousins are gamers, but I don't think they play fighting games, really. Like, they had vanilla, the last time I saw a fighting game in their household, it was vanilla Street Fighter 4. And I've never seen anything since. So somehow, I doubt they're gonna be buying some Guilty Gear that'll let me play it and blow them up with my godlike sin that I still haven't practiced because I'm lazy as fuck. Moving on. But yeah, so, Revelator's coming out soon. I'm gonna try to get it from Gamefly. We'll see what happens. Uh, the problem, obviously, is the price point. I mentioned it before. I'm not gonna go into detail about it again. I am uncomfortable with the fact that they are selling the PS4 version at sixty dollars. Despite, like, apparently, there's not even a dub for the story mode. It still has the Japanese voice, which is I understand why because apparently they're releasing further story mode stuff potentially to align with dlc characters or whatever down the line so they want to make sure that they can complete the entire thing with the voice actors so they don't have to do it piecemeal and probably pay them more than they want to pay them in order to get them to come in once record all right peace out 
we'll see you later when we get information about the you know ensuing follow-up stuff to Guilty Gear story. They just want to do it all at once. I understand that, but you're still wanting me to pay sixty dollars here. And so like the question becomes all these people that are shitting on Capcom for releasing an unfinished game, where y'all at? And I'm not trying to say that people should shit on Arc System Works for this. I'm not saying people should try to shit on Guilty Gear for this. I understand why they are doing it. I support them doing it. If you have a fighting game in finished, playable form, I believe you should get that out. And you should allow the people... Well, see, ugh, it's a really difficult scenario, right? Because as a fighting game fan, as somebody who plays fighting games for the fighting games... I couldn't, I've mentioned before, I just, I couldn't care less about the story mode stuff. Thus, my opinion is biased because of that. I, my belief for Street Fighter, well, you know, obviously Street Fighter had its issues outside of, you know, not having its finished story mode or whatever. So those I certainly do not support. But in terms of just, you know, like releasing the game as it was, if everything else, if the online was actually functional, it wasn't going to just shit itself the moment it came online, um... If there weren't, you know, the various bugs that have existed since, you know, the dawn of time. If they actually were on track with their DLC characters and with the Zenny shop. You know, like, I mean, obviously there's all these other things that have come to light since the release of the game. That certainly do not maintain any kind of positivity surrounding the scenario of its release. Um, but in terms of, like, what their intention was. Not what the actual result was, but what their intention was, I support it 100%. And I would be completely happy. I've mentioned. I think I've mentioned before. Anyway, that I would be the happiest motherfucker in the world if they released the arcade version, and then you know, four, five, six months down the line, they release the arcade version on consoles, and then you know, another however many months later, whatever, however long it takes them to finish a story mode, they release the story mode as DLC, and the people that want to purchase it, they can pay for it and they can get it. And then they don't have you don't have to buy a full priced game that is full priced because of something you may not necessarily care about, which is my scenario. And so you know I fully support release schedules like that, but I understand that I'm not the only one that does that. And I understand that from a casual consumer point of view, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look good because all that they see there is. They're releasing a rushed, unfinished game. Even though it's not rushed. Even though it's not unfinished. And I'm talking about Guilty Gear here. Let's not let's just ignore Street Fighter. <laughs> I'm talking about Guilty Gear. Even though it is not rushed, it is not necessarily unfinished. They just have more plans for it to support it as it moves forward. The game itself is perfectly functional and it works. But the problem is, people that are not fans of the fighting game for the fighting game see that and think oh well fuck that game I'm, I'm not i don't care about it my attention is completely diverted from it i'm not gonna buy it and it costs the game sales because no matter how you look at it no matter how much people may just be so derisive toward the quote-unquote casual consumer base look at mortal Kombat. look how much that fucking series sells look at its tournament numbers <laughs> compare the two that's the difference in terms of competitive versus casual players. And that is the fucking difference from a business standpoint that casuals make. Mortal Kombat sold millions of copies. Millions! And it's because of its name. It's because it is so iconic. And it's because it features all of the things that these so-called casual players want and love. And will, pl will buy it play it for a week and never touch it again from a fighting game standpoint from a competitive fighting gamer standpoint that sucks because it doesn't grow the community it sucks because it's useless to me i don't care about the story mode i don't care about the unlockables i don't care about any of that shit i just want to play the fighting game but from a longevity standpoint from this company being able to stay above water and continue to support that game you goddamn well better believe that shit matters so even though it doesn't matter to me specifically in that moment, in the long run, it goddamn well does matter to me how well the game does, and it is a simple fact of life that casuals determine a game's success. Because, I mean, we've all seen record-breaking numbers for Street Fighter Evo. Uh, Mr. Wizard 
posted on Twitter that they're 43 something. They did, he just did 43 XX. He did that Mega Man shit. We're in the year 43 XX because that 100 year difference, that decade. <laughs> sorry, not decade. Uh, that centuries difference makes a massive. Just it's so important to not know where you are. Anyway, point being, that's record breaking numbers. That's almost double. Ugh, where did them, where did these sniffles come from? That's almost double. What last year? No, not really. I think last year was at like 2,700, right? Still, that's a shitload more people. That's a huge improvement in the competitive scene. That's 4,300 people registered for Evo out of, I believe, they mentioned they've sold like 800,000 copies or something like that. Wow. That's what, a 2%? 2% of people that bought the game are going to the biggest tournament of the year. I mean, that's not to say that every single other one of those, you know, 796,000 people that did not register for EVO are quote-unquote casuals. Perhaps they just can't afford to go to EVO. Perhaps they just don't want to go to EVO. They're happy with their local tournament scene. But there sure as hell are not 700,000 of those dudes just like, ah, nah, I'm fine with locals. If it was, locals would be a hell of a lot more lucrative to go to. So it, it is just a simple fact that I don't even know why I got off on this tangent. But it's, you know, they determine a game's success and they determine whether or not your favorite series get to continue in the future. And so you can't be so, you know, just dismissive of them in general because they are incredibly important. Even if you never see them, even if you never play a match against them, they're important to you in some fashion. And I, I don't know. Uh, so just either way, that was weird. That was awkward. Central Fiction has gotten a confirmed Japanese console release date in fall of 2016. Uh, Axis Games, winter of 2016. Hopefully we get more solid information about that so it can be determined whether or not it's worth importing. And hopefully it's not $60. But from the other angle, I would be okay with it because this is basically an almost completely overhauled game. There are many new systems in place. No, I don't say many, but there's new systems in place that completely change the meta game. There's a lot of character rebalancing, a lot of new moves, a lot of old moves changed that they may as well be new, that kind of thing. So like these large sweeping changes that requires a lot of work. Thus, I can see where the sixty dollar price point might come in. Whether again, whether or not I'm still like okay, yeah, sure, I'll buy it for sixty dollars. It's worth it. That remains to be seen. But it's not like Revelator where it's like, here's almost the same game. Please pay us full price for it again. That that gets that gets my goat a little bit. Um, but yeah, so it just... Ugh, makes me so sad. Because like Central Fiction, I don't know. I haven't been... I dropped off really quickly on the videos of that. Like Chrono Phantasma, I watched so much footage of that. Like once a console release date was announced I kind of stopped a little bit I kind of dropped off just so I could not you know kind of burn myself out in terms of interest but I still you know like before that happened and you know obviously everybody knows there was a substantial period of time before that happened I was very interested in watching all of it for central fiction I watched you know like I watched Habiki footage Naoto footage for a very long time and then it was around the time nine actually became public that was around the time when I kind of stopped paying attention and then Izanami was released, and I kind of was like, eh, let me check her out a little bit. And I do kind of like, I am slightly interested in that character, but I still, like, I, I watched, like, two videos with her included. And that was the grand sum of my return to watching Central Fiction. I just haven't really watched anything since. So I don't know if that's just because it's kind of like, it's because I'm down on the series and Arc System Works in general, or if it's because I may not be terribly interested in the end result that central fiction is i don't know we'll have to see but it is kind of worrisome that i dropped off on my interest so quickly in footage of that game and i really just i don't know how it's developed i don't know which characters are considered great which characters are considered bad i don't know if makoto has received her comeuppance and is the best character in the game i don't know if i guess comeuppance is usually kind of negative results so that probably shouldn't have been had, you know, Karma has made her the best character in the game. Who knows? I don't know. Other people do. I don't, because I'm not paying attention to it. Um, and I mean, it's still, that's, you know, winter 2016, that could be anywhere from four to six months 
It's a long time. It's a long time to sit here and think about it. We'll see. I do know I'm not at all interested in the new character. Whoever she is from what, X-Blaze or whatever? I don't know what that is. I don't care about what that is. And from what I've seen in the character, I don't particularly care about the character either, so... It's all negative, right? It's all salt. It's all sadness. Whatever. I don't really have anything else to say. I thought I had more to kind of mention about it, but it's just kind of like... What could I say that I have not said already regarding Blaze Blue? <laughs> regarding Arc System Works? French bread! You sons of bitches! Give me an Unist console version! You motherfuckers! You buff Nana saying you're not letting me get my hands on that beautiful, beautiful winged schoolgirl! Kinda of a little awkward there. But no, seriously. They buffed my character, who was terrible by the by. Not terrible, but she, she wasn't great. She wasn't very good. They buff her, and then nobody plays her. I've tried to watch Japanese arcade footage, and it's still all Gordos and Wildsteins and Photons, and who's the other character? There's one other character. No, is it all Photon? It might all be Photon. I see a lot of Photon in those videos. Oh, uh, Ori. I actually see a decent amount of Ori now. Is that her name? Is it Ori, the fencer with the giant suit of armor dude supporting her? I've actually seen a decent amount of her. Oh, Seth. Because apparently Seth got buffed to hell. I think people consider him one of the best in the characters now in Japan. See a lot of him. See a decent amount of Akatsuki. But I don't see no goddamn Nanase. Because people are bitches. I want, I want Unist so badly, so badly. Because I didn't really get my real experience with Unil. I got to play it a little bit. It had a little bit of attention after its English release, but as is the case with most anime games, a lot of the people that tend to stick around online, at least for you know a few months, they tend to import. And so a lot of people imported the game, played it, were interested in it for a little while, and then they dropped off before the English release ever happened. And so I missed a potentially thriving community. And I got like two, three weeks. <laughs> and that was it. And then it just dropped off. And there were only like six people playing after that. It made me goddamn sad. I need my Unist. Please. Give me it. I'm so sad. Because we got King of Fighters 14 waiting in the window. Uh, waiting in the, you know, whatever. In the wings. That's what it's called. Uh, eh. I still, I just, I can't get over how bad the game looks. It really, it just, it does look like a bad Chinese MMO. That's really, that's like, that's the only way I can describe it is like, yo, what kind of graphics they got? Oh, you know those Chinese MMO shit? Yep. Yeah, it looks like that. It doesn't look good. I mean, apparently from everybody that I've heard, it plays really well. It flows very nicely. It feels like King of Fighters, but it sure as shit don't look like it. <laughs> And that irks me. Like I've mentioned before, aesthetics are a huge thing to me. They're very big. And it's not necessarily that, you know, I care about the graphical quality. I don't need photorealistic shit. I don't need the best sprites ever drawn by hand. I don't need that kind of stuff. But it can't look bad. And as far as I can tell, King of Fighters 14 looks bad. The effects just lack any sort of oomph to them. They just, they look cheap. Like, like I'm watching a D-level action flick kind of a thing with like the worst possible with 1960s special effects applied to them it just it doesn't look good it looks lazy and so I don't know if they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot by trying to cram in as many characters as they are from the outset and other aspects of the game are being sacrificed because of it I hope not I sure as hell hope not but we'll see anyway I've talked for long enough thank you for listening I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.